My guest this evening is no stranger to the Kevin Smith Show audience. He's been with us before. And um, actually, um, a couple of pretty hot shows because what we were talking about was his book entitled Not by Fire, But by Ice. And um, although he was not the only voice out there that was telling us that the global warming story was a scam, uh, he certainly, I think, was probably uh, the um, most, uh, most focused on voice because of the book. And um, he was telling us, look, it's a scam, folks. Their data doesn't match the actual data. The stuff that they're telling us is based on fiction. Well, now we know. Uh, now we know that was, in fact, the case. And um, he, I guess you, he didn't need to be vindicated, but I guess you could say that he has been vindicated. And uh, Robert Felix, welcome back to the Kevin Smith Show. Thanks, Kevin. I'm, I'm very happy to be on with you. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking about uh, my first book, Not by Fire, but by Ice. Mm-hmm. And just recently, and, and I, I, I know we're going to end up talking about something else, too, or I hope, but, mm-hmm. uh, uh, but just recently, in, in, in February, Al Gore had sent a letter to the, um, to the New York Times in the op-ed piece, and it was a very, very long opinion letter that the New York Times printed. And in in that letter, uh, some of the things that he said is he, he said almost all of the ice-covered regions of the earth are melting and seas are rising. And I just couldn't let that go by because both parts of Gore's statement are false. Uh, you know, never mind that he that he only makes a few a passing reference to the IPCC and their fraudulent claims that all of the Himalayan glaciers will melt uh, by 2035. Never mind that he just said that the oceans are rising uh, precipitously uh, because the IPCC has admitted they were wrong. And never mind that he completely ignored the the climate gate thing. But but the thing is that that his two statements are just flat wrong. Our, our glaciers are growing, they're not melting, and the seas are not rising. And you know, I do have a copy of this letter on the, on the website for anybody who wants to see it on iceagenow.com. But I talk about the, you know, I get specific. I get specific is that, is that in the Himalayas, there are, that we know of, there are more than 230 glaciers growing uh, and and uh, that includes uh, that includes some some pretty darn big ones uh, in Norway. The, the some of the glaciers are growing, but it's in the in the Himalayas. It's t- 230 glaciers, as I said, are growing. But uh, I don't know. I just it just drives it drives me nuts. In the in the uh, uh, in the United States, glaciers are growing, and that may be something that your listeners aren't even aware of. Because so many people aren't aware of that, but the Nisqually Glacier on Mount Rainier on Washington's Mount Rainier is growing. The Emmons Glacier on Mount Rainier is growing. Uh, in in southern Washington, there's Crater Glacier. You know, Mount St. Helens uh, erupted back in 1980, and there was a huge glacier on top of Mount St. Helens, and uh-huh. that glacier. When, in, when the, the volcano erupted, the water melted, and there was ice and snow and ice and, and, and mud and bulldozers and everything else washing down the Toodle River. That glacier, it's called Crater Glacier, is now bigger than it was in 1980. It's growing like crazy. In California, we keep hearing about the melting glaciers, but in California, all seven glaciers on Mount Shasta are growing. And this includes the three-mile-long Whitney Glacier. It's the largest glacier in, in California. And, and, and it's not the only place. In Alaska, glaciers are growing there for the first time in 250 years. The Hubbard Glacier last year at this time was advancing at the rate of seven feet per day, more than half a mile a year. And in Icy Bay, there were glaciers advancing. At least three of them were advancing a third of a mile per year. And then... <laughs> 
Uh, one of the things that that Al Gore did is in his his letter in his letter uh, opinion piece in the New York Times, he included a link where he could go and see uh, that in fact the glaciers were melting, and then that link it takes you to a, a uh, the University of Zurich to a, a scientist there who talks about the glaciers growing in Norway. He studied 80 glaciers. Well, there's in the Himalayas, there's 87 glaciers that are actually surging, say so nothing about growing. But here's the other thing is that this guy, this scientist mentioned that, uh, that the uh, Juno ice field is growing. Well, he didn't want to say growing, so he said the Juno ice field has positive values. Well, the Juno ice field covers 1,500 square miles, and it's the fifth largest ice field in the entire Western Hemisphere. So here's here's Al Gore's own his his own reference saying that the fifth largest uh, ice field in the entire Western Hemisphere is growing. In Argentina, the Perito Moreno Glacier is growing. It's it's the largest glacier in Argentina. In Chile, the Pio 11 Glacier is growing. It's the largest glacier in Chile. Uh, in, in in Canada, glaciers on, are growing on Mount Logan, which is the tallest uh, mountain in Canada. Uh -huh. In France, glaciers are growing on Mont Blanc, which is the tallest mountain in France. Is just, in New Zealand, I, you probably have some listeners in New Zealand. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. The last I heard, there were 50, all 50 glaciers in New Zealand were growing. But I haven't been able to verify that lately, so if you have any New Zealand listeners who can either verify that for me or, or set me straight, I'd love to hear from them. Well, um, you know, back when we did those previous shows where we talked about this, I got email for days because um, uh, people were, were saying that, well, you say you don't get into politics and you talked about Al Gore. Well, look, if Al Gore decides that he's an auto mechanic and uh, he starts promoting some auto mechanic uh, procedure or some some kind of parts or something like that, and um, somebody goes on the radio and says, well, those parts that he's promoting are not good parts. Well, what are we talking about? Are we talking about Al Gore, the politician, or are we talking about Al, Go Al Gore? Uh, the parts salesman, or are we talking about the parts? Well, we're talking about the parts. Well, and and you know, I when I wrote not by fire but by ice, I wasn't trying to. <laughs> I, I found out I did. I wasn't trying to get into a political fight. Uh, what I had discovered in in studying the dinosaur extinction and studying magnetic reversals, it just, and, and studying the ice age cycle. It just plain looked to me as if we were headed into an ice age, leaving out any politics, uh, because there is a cycle to ice ages that, that shows up in the geologic record. It's clear that, that ice ages come and go about every 11,500 years, smaller ice ages, but it's called the Milankovitch cycle. And my guess is that any geologist listening tonight is, is going to realize that, yes, that Milankovitch cycle does drive the climate. So leaving politics out of it, this is, this is just science. Well, there's been, look, there's been climate long before there were politicians. <laughs> okay, just because they decided to wade into the climate, uh, the area of, of climatology, uh, that doesn't mean that discussing climate is political uh, there is climate and then there is there are politicians and and the politicians um, from my point of view tend towards fiction on nearly anything they speak about and uh, they're some of the best fiction writers uh, that the world has ever seen but if all politicians if every politician in the world were to vanish Overnight, aside from the world suddenly becoming much more peaceful and prosperous, uh, the only uh, only thing that you could say about its impact on the climate is the climate goes on. It's going to do what it does 
whether there are any politicians or not. 